Hello guys, my name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel and you want to follow the updates from my country and you support Ukraine, please subscribe. And if you're not new to the channel, I love you. Thank you so much. And today I want to speak about Ukrainian victories in this missile air battles. And actually, you see, I'm not a professional military expert, but I'm a professional Ukrainian trying to translate, trying to transmit what ordinary people are talking about in my country. And we are talking about this total change in the way Russia used air and now Ukraine uses air to stop Russia, to cause panic and to conduct counter offensive. So since the beginning of this war, they were heavily using aviation, missiles and drones. And honestly, when we were reading the war is coming in February, in January, just before the start of this war, no one believed aviation would be involved, missiles would be involved, because this is so brutal, this is so wrong, but Russia is a terrorist state, it's brutal, it's filled with hatred towards everything democratic, free and normal. So that's what they were doing having this initiative. And starting August, September, we see a lot of Ukrainian victories in the air, not only on the territory of temporarily occupied Ukrainian lands, but also deep in Russia. I was so happy to uh, write a list of Russian cities, which is weird. Typically, I'm not happy when thinking or writing anything about Russia. But I uh, put down a list of Russian cities that were um, targeted, their military infrastructure located on these uh, cities were targeted with the help of Ukrainian drones. And this is Kaluha, Tula, Rezan, Bransk, Orel, Moscow, of course. And these are beautiful messages that Ukrainian armed forces sent to Russia, giving them this very logical conclusion, war always returns to its home. And Russia is the home of war, is the home of all of these troubles and terror in general. So since August, September 2023, we were extremely active in hitting military targets on the territory of Russia and in temporarily occupied Crimea, Donetsk and Luhansk, which they use as the basis for their military storages, logistics, and supplying more orcs to Ukraine. And also we were able to target deep into Russia more than 1000 kilometers, which is a huge success taking into account that many countries, like all the countries are not ready to give us long range missiles because they are afraid of escalation, forgetting that Russia is the one who escalates Russia is the one that constantly breaks international agreements. Russia is the one that terrorizes the world and terrorists only understand the language of violence, unfortunately. But we've managed to um, threaten them to cause panic in Russia and most importantly, target their military objects. And here I want to stress, contrary to orcs, we never target civilian objects. We are always very careful, though it's really difficult during war times, during like all of these things that influence any operation, we are always focused on their military airfields, military storages, petrol uh, supplies and other things, thinking about those Russian civilians who are hurraying and cheering Russians to kill more Ukrainians, but we don't want to turn into orcs, we will not. We are very much different with Russians, and I'm sure this war demonstrated it to the world. And those who doubt it now clearly see that maybe, I don't know, Russia and Ukraine are two most different countries in the world. So we always target legal targets, legal objects, and perhaps the greatest success so far was uh, burning four uh, military aircraft on the territory of Pskov airfield. And uh, different sources prove it was a huge tragedy in Russia. They did not know how to explain it. And Shoihu even invented uh, that it was not Ukraine. It was some of NATO countries possibly using a base in Estonia. 
they were super emotional, they were even ready to target Estonia, but then the results proved it was from Ukraine, it traveled all along Belarus in the air and targeted Pskov. Um, Russians will return to this idea that it's not Ukraine, it's NATO who attacks them to try and explain to the population all of these failures and losses because they cannot simply accept that they are losing to Ukraine. If you agree that Russia is losing and Russia is collapsing and we will witness that and you're not yet subscribed, please do and help us fight in this informational war because this is super important. So, all of these aircraft destroyed in Pskov, they were pretty expensive, they are no more produced in Russia because, like, Russia is degrading, guys, honestly, not just because I'm a Ukrainian, but because that's their reality. And more than 20 years they do not produce such aircraft, so this is a great loss for them. Uh, another, like, very symbolic hit was on various Moscow business centers at night when they are empty there are no people but moscow is the heart of orkland with all of this really evil people planning how to kill more ukrainians and targeting their business center in the heart of moscow is a signal your air defense systems are working really bad and you are very very vulnerable despite all of this myths you are spreading reality is uh, different and uh, also there are sources from Japan, because Russia has lots of conflicts all over the world, and one of them is about the Kuril Islands, which belong to Japan, I, I believe. And they had lots of air defense systems close to Japan, and they moved all of them back inside Russia, because now Ukraine is making them burn. Ukraine is causing panic. And... They are so much like at a loss what to do, how to explain it. Their propagandists are trying to say it's NATO, but no, it's just Ukraine, just with drones. Some of these, these are cardboard drones, not something that complicated. We don't have long range missiles. We're waiting for mid range missiles. We don't have F-16 yet. And even with this cardboard drones and other Ukrainian, Ukrainian developments, we are able to make Russia burn and to make Russia burn in those two different meanings, literal and uh, metaphorical. And we reach different cities and we reach the military objects. That is important and in a pretty short time, which means like we have a lot of wise people in Ukrainian armed forces. We have a lot of wise allies from NATO countries who help us develop extremely effective, efficient, I would say, cheap and at the same time uh, persuasive tactics, how to stop orcs, how to feed orcs their own medicine. And uh, we target their logistics, we destroy their military objects, and this is very important for the future liberation of Ukrainian territories and also for this dismantling of Russian military uh, machine so that they will not be dangerous to other countries that they are looking at. Because once again, if we lose support, if we don't win this war, Russia will continue and of course it will not stop in Ukraine. But I'm sure we will stay united and we will stop this global terrorism. And now we are focused on the destruction of logistics, connections, and cleaning Ukrainian territory of orcs. Thank you so much for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. Introduce yourself to our shop. It has lots of beautiful t-shirts, hoodies, caps, cups, pillowcases. Uh, let us know what are the other products you would like to see there. Subscribe to my Twitter threads and Instagram and join my Discord community. But most importantly, speak about Ukraine, remind about Ukraine and stand with us. This means a lot and we are very grateful. Slava Ukraini!